Fuck me. G'day, I'm Ash, I hope you're all doing fantastically well. Welcome yourselves to the Dev Server. As per usual, as everyone always says, you know, everything is subject to change and not final. This is for primarily change log, it wants a strike, a major update. So, for your Seth Africans, and there's a whole host of interesting things that we'll take a look at today. That being said though, there's a limited amount of aircraft at this current time. I don't think everything is quite ready just yet. There may be a second dev server later down the line and we'll showcase everything that there is to show in this video. Now, obviously there is a focus on necessarily the ground vehicles and I'm not necessarily taken nor am I a naval person. So we're gonna start off with the aircraft first. I'll leave timestamps down below. The aircraft class attacker has been renamed to strike aircraft and extended with the addition of a large number of vehicles. You can see them popping up on screen right now. Essentially a whole host of different vehicles have been chosen to be replaced from the attacker to strike aircraft. And this makes sense considering the different types of vehicles that are in War Thunder per se. So aircraft like the PE-3, the Bowfighter, the F-3D, the BF-110, etc, etc. You can have a look at the patch notes down below. In things that make your ears sound fantastic, new sound design for all aircraft weaponry have been added. Sweden gets a new rank 2 battle riding 2.0 Fokker. Yeah, a new Fokker in town indeed. This is the DXXI, or the Fokker 21. There's 21 of those Fokkers. Never mind. It's got two 20mm cannons, uh, Rolikens FFs, 120 rounds, so 60 rounds per gun. It's got uh, two 7.7s, and it's a decent little thing. It sits just over here underneath the other Finnish aircraft, which is actually French. Interesting. <laughs> there you go. So, China gets a delightful little aircraft in the form of the Taiwanese F5A. This is a rank 6, better rating 10.7. It's got 20mm cannon times 2 with 560 rounds. It's got AIM 9P sidewinders. So, those fantastic little things. And you can put aside all the jokes about it being a MiG 28, because I'm sure you there's going to be a skin or marketplace skin available for this aircraft when this patch comes out in the near future but just look at it so dainty i've got a soft spot for this one and i certainly will be covering this one in a video in in future but has no armor protection the x-ray is quite dainty modifications wise it is equipped with a whole host of different things you've got aim 9ps 250 pound bombs you've got 750 pound bombs times five you aim 9ps again you do get the access to agm 12s and you also get access to the ffr mighty mouse rockets and you can also ca carry a single 2,000 pound bomb, which honestly is probably the most hilarious thing to see underneath this aircraft right now. But that aside, there is a version which is being spotted in the dev files. This is the American F5C version, not the A version. And I presume that will be coming to the American tech tree at a later date. Also spotted in the game files was this, the SU-9, or is it the SU-11? It's from 1946. Essentially, it's the Soviet test program with German engines to make their own jet aircraft. Fairly interesting stuff, yeah? In strange things that have been spotted aircraft-wise, there is this thrust reversal control. Give Viggen, please. There's also this interesting missing texture, or should I say, lack of armament preset for a Phantom. Mm, I wonder what that could be. And now for the star and a reasonably priced Sukhoi. Uh, this is the Su-17, also known as the Fitter uh, M2, or Fitter D, I think it was called. It's a fighter jet bomber with a variable swept wing geometry. More variable geometry, all sorts of interesting nerd terminology here. This is a rank 6, but running 10.0, and at current time, this aircraft doesn't necessarily have all of its armor presets. For example, if I go over here to modifications, the gun pods, if I go and try and install them, they're non-existent. No gun pods whatsoever. But, uh, that being said though, it does get four R60s, and R60s do go whoosh after all. But, the SU-17 M2 can basically change its wing sweep, and we'll take a look at this in further depth in another video. All you need to do is wing go change. Sometimes lift is less, and sometimes lift is more, and then you can land or you can go faster. There's your two options right there, in a nutshell. I really should be teaching physics. Moving on. 
There is no armor protection for the vehicle at current, and the cockpit is not finished either. There are keybinds for this one, and I'll be covering this in a video in future, but in the meantime, this patch is underwhelming, so let's go check out the rest of the stuff. The A7D does get an updated cockpit, thank fuck, and also gets air-to-surface AGM-65A missiles, which have been classed, and there's also a heads-up display, if you would care to see that. Look on screen right about now. And obviously this is what it looks like with the AGM-65s. For those of you wanting to know, changes on helicopters well, good news. Great Britain gets a new cockpit and it looks fantastic for the Wasp HIS Mark I. You can see it on screen right about now. Moving on, we're going to take a look quickly at naval. There is a Whitby class F-77. This is a rank 5 battle rating 4.3. Essentially what it is, is a frigate. And we're moving into territory where this is going to be interesting to see where naval progresses. Provided that naval does progress. Moving on, Japan also gets the IGN Itsuzu. This is a rank 3 battle rating 4.3. It is a light cruiser and you can check out the stats by pausing the video i'm not going to bother i'm going to skip over this and last but not least for naval because nobody cares about naval again is the sms kaiser and this is a battleship rank 5 battle running 6.0 Right, that about does it for naval. In other news, a mechanism for limiting the use of custom sound modifications has been implemented. So, rip all those people who have sound modifications, all those people who like sound mods particularly, which make the game sound a lot better. Unfortunately, this has backfired a little bit because people are using it to apparently increase vehicle sounds and be able to locate other players in a unbalanced system. Or maybe if you had better game sounds in the fucking first place, we wouldn't have to mod the shit. But anyway, let's move on. Let's take a look quickly at the ground vehicles, starting with USA. Now, USA gets the M3A3 Bradley. Currently, this thing doesn't have its missiles correctly modeled. The armor isn't correctly modeled, a whole host of other different things. But essentially, this thing gets tow missiles and should be an upgrade of the other Bradley. You could mistake this thing for a French tank, however, it's actually Austrian, and, well, in shortness, it actually goes in the German tech tree, which is quite an odd choice. This is a rank 6, but a rank 9.3. This is the Austrian Jakobpanzer A2. I think that's how you pronounce it. Never mind, it doesn't necessarily matter. It's got a 105mm cannon, and it is a light tank, so there you go. Mobility, top speed, what is it? 59 kilometers an hour. There you go. USSR gets a BT-7M, or as, or as I'm going to call it, the BDSM, because obviously this is a very kinky tank. Look at the chains on the front of that thing. What's different about this one? Well, it's got a better engine, goes faster, which is the T-28-1938, rank 1, 1.3. Low tier, fleshing out the low tiers, good for them. Moving right on. Japan gets an interesting dirt vehicle. This is a Hero Shah, rank 1, 1.7. Based upon the Rogo, it's an armed with a 120mm uh, gun from 1898. It's got 16 rounds of ammunition. You can see the ammunition in the side. And, well, this is going to be an intensely fun little derp gun for Japan. China uh, actually gets... Where is it? There it is. This thing. Uh, basically a BTR armoured truck with a... 100 millimeter gun the same gun that i believe is on the type 59 or at least the and this thing is not exactly small it's a big boy <laughs> rank 5 battle rating 8.0 it should be fun to see this thing does 100 kilometers an hour and that's really about it for china now sweden does get an ikv 91 105 battle rating 6 8.3 and there you go all the good stuff for the bofors with 105 mil and obviously it does a top speed of 65 kilometers an hour for fans of Italy, you now get three Pizza Panzers. That being the Panzer 4G, which is a rank 3 battle rating 4.0, little premium, without side skirts. It looks absolutely dapper if I do say so. There is a Stug 3, rank 3 battle rating 4.0, and there is a Panzer 3N, which is a rank 2 battle rating 3.0. The Stug 3 and the Panzer 3 are both in, in tree tech tree vehicles. And aside from that, you know, these are nice little additions to Italy, I suppose. It fleshes out Italy's tank line just a little bit. Right, South Africa has the Rattel 90. Uh, there is his armored bus car, and I can't put on this Af African's accent very longer. But there is also an Elland 90 Mark 7, and I sound like a retarded Australian, but that is okay, because here we see this is armored car territory, we've got the battle bus, we've got the little car, we've got the bigger battle bus with Milan missiles, the ATGM. We then have the Elephant Mark 1A, because, you know, South Africa, and it really roots it in sort of a interesting way. They've gotten rid of the aviation engine, and instead they have put it uh, in some sort of diesel uh, mechanic kind of thing. 
Now, unfortunately for South Africa, they still get another battle bus. This time with the ZT3 HGTM. And honestly, I can't keep up that accent. It's already racist enough as is. Uh, there is a Rui Cat with an experimental turret. Uh, there is an Offaland with, which is basically an upgraded version of a Centurion with extra armor and different other things and so on and so forth. And lastly, there is an anti-air, the ZA-35, which is a Gepard and a Rui Cat. And that is my uh, South African... Uh, sort of experimentation with what you have for ground vehicles. And now I'll show you the new location briefly and the Battle Pass vehicles. With the advent of Battle Pass Season 2, we get four new vehicles. That being the T-55E1, as you can see here, also known as the the, the mobile wagon, or the hamburger wagon, I think it's been called on the forums. It's a rank 3 battle rating 4.7 with a 76mm cannon with 42 rounds, and it does look <laughs> very, very interesting indeed. The Soviets get this ITP uh, M1. It's a rank 3 battle rating 3.3. This is a very heavily armed 37mm cannon and two 20mm uh, cannons uh, fighter plane with a max speed of 676. Now, for that being th that said, it does come with a bunch of rockets and you can also equip some bombs on it. A bit like a P-40 in a way. A very, very interesting, I will say. And uh, there's not much else to say about this thing, uh, so that's about it. Now, there is a new naval vessel as well, but for some reason I'm having issues previewing it. And moving on, we've got the Centurion Mark V-1. This is the later tier vehicle for the Battle Pass Season 2. And I don't understand the addition of having more Australian stuff in the Battle Pass, because Australia will ultimately just end up by being the Battle Pass nation. But suffice to say, rank 5 battle rating 7.3. And if you like Australian armour, I certainly do. It's got the extended fuel tanks there on the back, as well as some extra carry weight and all the other componentry is needed for this thing to travel around having a look at the x-ray there it doesn't have the correct engine it's supposed to but it is an aviation engine after all so expect this thing to be a little bit sluggish compared to the elephant in regards it does have night vision go to the modifications there and is basically a stock standard centurion everywhere else so anyway, that about does it for the overview of the dev server. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And a nice addition, I presume, there is a little lacking in content this time around. Usually I'd split it into multiple videos. However, there's two things I want to go take a look at and a couple of other vehicles I also want to have a look at too. So there is that, I suppose. Also, if you're watching this video as it's released, then I might be live on Twitch checking out the new vehicles. So see you there. With that ado, thank you very much for watching. Stick around and I'll catch you next time.